The C90R is a multi-purpose rack controller, so we have made uh, quite a few configurations you can load out of the box with functionality, and one of them is for the Blackmagic MultiView 16. It will also work with the MultiView 4, but it has less features inherently, so the MultiView 16 will allow us to show uh, how much you can actually do to control the multi-viewer with Skahoy controllers. It's all Unisketch, and in this video I will also spend a little more time on explaining how this configuration has been done. But first we'll start out by simply taking this one, having a user configuration loaded currently, doing something entirely different, and see how easy it is to load a different configuration on the C90R with the Skahoy firmware updater. So all it takes is really a USB cable from the controller to your computer and the Skahoy firmware updater app looks like this. It has identified the controller we see and what you do is to click the open configuration button. Within a few seconds, usually, it will load up a page from our online repo where you can see the current configuration. It's apparently set up to work with vMix but we will change the configuration now to Blackmagic MultiView. So this configuration is supplied by us. It's a default configuration and we maintain it. When we choose this one, instantly the controller will now support the Blackmagic MultiView and in a moment we'll also look at how these buttons are configured. But first, let's see what happens when we uh, download this new configuration to the controller. So we go back to the firmware update application and press the button, check for updates, and then it will fetch the firmware from the server and install on the unit. So now the firmware file has been generated, downloaded, and it's currently being written to the Skahoy controller, which will now reboot and connect to the multi-view. When you use the C90R with the Blackmagic Multi-View 16, we have set it up in the default configuration so this knob will change which layout you use, which, uh, how the uh, multi-viewer matrix looks, if it's 4x4, 3x3, or 2x2. And for the rest of the buttons, this will be a view selector. So whenever I push these buttons, I basically pick one of the views on the multi-viewer, and these buttons over here will route the source or the input um, displayed in the label to that particular view. So, in the 2x2 mode, you see how these four buttons are uh, lit by a blue color and when I press this button I now pick view number one on the multi-viewer and when I press buttons over here I will route that particular source to the view mentioned in the display here and the one that I picked with the uh, button selector in this group of buttons too. If I go to 3x3 three three, you'll see that now we have three buttons in this direction lit and this row will select the top row of views, this one will select the middle row, and when I use the shift key, then this row will now work with the uh, button row of views on the multi-viewer. So we have, in other words, a shift key that will give us access to uh, the, the bottom part, and you can see how this would definitely be necessary in the 4x4 mode where the shift key will uh, essentially give us access to the views on the top part of the multi-viewer and the views on the bottom part. So this is the view selector and we did the routing over here. Now one of the great features about the multi-view 16 is that you can pick one of the views uh, uh, for solo display. So when I push this button uh, which is called multi-view solo, I basically toggle on and off the solo mode of the multi-viewer. And in solo mode you see it reflected down here, you can see what the source is and it's really easy with our panel to route sources to that particular, uh, or to the solo view. If you want to route sources beyond 8, because now we have access to source 1 through 8, then you use the shift key again, and pressing the shift key, the displays will update, so you see what the sources um, are that you get routed to the, multi, or to the uh, solo output. The labels you see in the displays are currently pulled from the MultiView 16. They are all named source and view and so forth, but if you put in other names, they would instantly update on the displays too. 
there are a few advanced functions in the multi-viewer too, and we have put those all on this knob. They are not used heavily and a lot. That stuff like, for instance, you can lock the, the views. So currently view number one is, is open. And um, if I uh, scroll with this knob, um, I see which view I'm now affecting when I press and hold, then I can lock view number four. And what it means is if we uh, disable this mode and then we uh, pick view number four, that's this one, you'll see that the buttons over here will actually be flashing. And that's because the view has been locked. If we unlock the view again, they are not flashing anymore. So that's a nice touch. We can, uh, we get some feedback that something is not exactly uh, right in the sense that we would not be able to actually route sources at that point. Now, uh, when I press this button, it works as a sort of a shift cycle button. So now I see actions like multi-view border on off, so when I change this, we have borders enabled and disabled on the multi-viewer. If I press it again, we have multi-view labels, audio meters, tally on and off. We have now a selector for audio input, source uh, selection for the audio input. Then uh, the last two things in this little menu is saving and recalling presets which is a feature we put into our controller. It's not inherently in the Multiview 16, but we allow you to store routes to the Multiviewer and then later recall them. And we have five banks in which you can store and later recall such configurations of your Multiviewer. So now that we have taken a look at how the C90R works with the Multiview 16, out of the box, I would like to introduce you to the configuration behind. You may not care the least about configuration, and we designed our controllers so they ship with great defaults out of the box, and you just saw one of them. But what you may like to keep in your mind is that they are 100% configurable, so the day you need something which it didn't do from the factory, you can easily change it. So um, it's now connected to the firmware app and I just need to press the open configuration button to access the configuration online. In a few seconds, my web page will load up and we see the configuration we installed previously. So it has now become a user configuration because I decided to press the save settings button in the corner here at an earlier point. So, um, the controller I could potentially uh, include user configurations, but I didn't make any changes, so, but, but I can do that right now. So let's look at the controller, how it's structured. You basically see a graphic here with the 10 buttons, uh, with displays, the group here for view selection and the encoders. So we could start out by taking a look at the routing buttons. And as soon as we jump down on the page, to um, this section. We see how the page is divided into four columns, all right? So the first column is called two by two, three by three, four by four, and then the last one, solo. These are four different states the controller can be in depending on which of, uh, how the settings on the Multiview 16 uh, is set up. And in the two by two view, you see how um, we have selected actions, for the multi-viewer, if I, if I click it here, you see the full name of the action and you can also see the whole list of other options we could choose. So it says route source to view and that action will take source number one and route to whatever view is selected in memory A. Or if I press the shift key, the green button right there, then it will be source number nine that is routed to memory A. This configuration is repeated for each of these eight buttons on the front panel. So I'm not gonna repeat myself over that. I'll just take my word for it. It's the same configuration, but now it's source two and source 10 and so forth. So the question is, what about memory A? The, what is memory A? Well, as I say, memory A is the destination of, of this route. Whenever I press it, it will move this source to memory A. And memory A is somewhere else set to the, the view that we want to address. Huh. We remember from the presentation that this block of buttons was used to select the view.
but it was also special in the sense that depending on whether we had a 2x2, 3x3 or 4x4 state, we had only these four buttons or we had these six buttons plus the shift key giving us access to another three and so forth to do the routing or to selecting, selecting the view. So, um, but we could at least see how this looks. And if we look at button A, we see that when we press it, it will put a one value into memory A or if shift is held down, it will do nothing. And that's because in the two by two mode, when shift is held down, you turn to another page of view selection that does not make sense because in two by two mode, we, we have all the, the knobs in the standard case um, that, that we need. But in three by three mode, we use the shift uh, divider to either let this button put source number one into memory A, or it will take source number three and put that into memory A. So it's basically a question of, in either of these different modes, to make sure that these buttons will route the right value into memory A, so the routing buttons will put the right source or input to that view. We can also take a look at the solo mode, and you see in solo mode we have completely disabled this block of buttons. That's actually confirmed by, when I press this one, you can see it just uh, goes out. So there's no light in the buttons, no function, and that's because in solo mode I have chosen no action for these. So we can go back up here and see how does the shift keys actually operate. So um, I press E, which was my primary shift key, very basic. It has the same functionality across all states. What it does is it, it toggles shift level uh, between zero and one for register A, and we have also set a local color. So to make the panel a little more um, functionally grouped, uh, we use blue for the uh, view selection, then green for the shift key, and we also used rows for this menu cycle button. So green is, is the color you see I add it to the key by adding the local color action right there for the shift key. So that makes me curious, how did I then set up uh, button J? Would that look just anywhere like that? And the fact is, yes, it does. It's also a shift level key. It goes up to level six and I use the cycle up uh, modifier to the button press. So it, essentially it means as I repeatedly press this button, it is changing the value of uh, the, uh, the shift level from zero to one to two to three to four up to seven, and then uh, it rolls over again to zero. And this is then used on this encoder. We also put the local color, so it's, it's, uh, it has the, the rose uh, color you see on the panel. And um, now I mentioned shift registers. So basically these two are both shift keys, but apparently they affect different parts of the controller. And that's because this key, um, and, and we saw that in the configuration that it was set to affect shift register A. And shift register A has been designed to affect this section. And um, the small um, um, button, or the, uh, it's called a virtual hardware interface of hardware component section two here, will give us access to setting uh, up a, well, basically configure how this section is evaluated. So, the reason why the view selector buttons respond to values in shift register A is because for this particular section, I have set the local shift register to be A and not default. I have also set the local color to be blue. Aha, so there we saw with a single configuration for that whole section, I have now defined that the local color should be blue and not white, which is the default out of the box. Ah, it's great. We are kind of uh, revealing, unraveling how this controller is configured. It's really great. I like it so much. Um, we can go to these encoders. Important? Yeah. Um, well, this one is really basic, actually, because all it does is just sets the multi-view layout value. But encoder number two looks far more complex, honestly. Um, but it really makes sense because if we think about it, the rows button, it was traveling through eight shift states altogether. So zero up to seven, including. And in zero, it will give us access to the lock view function of the multi-view. Uh, then in state one, it will allow us to toggle on off borders, 
the labels, audio meters, SDI tally, select source for audio and so forth. And the reason why each of these actions will appear on their uh, particular shift state, uh, shift level, is because between them we have used the divider called shift. And because the rose button was allowed to change the default shift register, there's uh, no more configuration we need to do. It will um, just work as you see it right here and as shift levels normally work. The last thing that I would like to introduce you to, because it's, um, it's a special thing, is how on earth did we manage to let the four states of the controller depend on a setting in the multi-viewer. Because the fact is, when I change this, it is changing through the, the states, the columns. When I press the solo button, it goes to the fourth column of configuration. But the awesome thing is, if I go to the menu here and I change the layout on the multi-viewer itself, let me see if I can do this. You see, now I'm changing the layout 2 by 2, 3 by 3, and 4 by 4. And simultaneously, you see the values are changing up here, including how these buttons react, because the MultiView 16 device core on the C90R has a special function that allows us to map this, the value of the layout over to the state register. And this has been done by using the controller virtual component. I want to show you how that looks. So this virtual component allows us to make a configuration that is valid for the whole controller. The section virtual components allow me to make such a configuration for just a group of interface components. So I click this one. And you see, for the controller virtual component, I have set a, f a, an action from the Blackmagic Multiviewer device call called shift, uh, set shift and state, state what? Let me just see. State by. So sh set shift and state by layout plus solo. So I have different options here. If I just chose solo, then the state would be either the one or the other based on solo is on and off. Layout, it would just be uh, three different states, but in this one, it's a combined one that gives me all four of them here. So this has been some, something we designed, how this would work. And then I, I ask that this is setting shift, uh, the register S in the controller. And then um, secondly, I also point out register S to be the local state register that is governing the, how the whole controller works. And this is really useful if I wanted to limit such a, a setting of a state to a particular uh, section of the controller, or if you have a modular controller, you can assign it to a particular module. <sighs> so that was the configuration of the C90R in um, when it works with the Blackmagic Multiviewer 16, and it includes and showcases a lot of the power you will find in the Unisketch OS, something that do, you will not have to care about before one day the default configuration out of the box is not enough for what you want to do, but there's always a way to make your Skyhawk controller solve your problems.